Hi everyone, my name is Nila Zinis and I'm the product manager for Stunner at Unchained Labs. I will be your moderator and thank you for joining us today. We will have a quick Q&A session at the end of the presentation. To ask questions, all you have to do is click on Q&A in the Zoom navigation bar at the top or bottom of your screen and type your question. When submitting a question, please avoid clicking the anonymous button so we can reach out via email if you aren't able to get to your question. We will get to as many of them as we can. And now I'd like to introduce Kevin Lance, the analytical mar marketing manager at Unchain Labs. Today, Kevin will walk us through how LNP researchers can finally move past one at a time DLS and dye based RNA quantification using Stunner. And now I'll hand it over to Kevin. Thanks, Nels. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm looking forward to your presentation. I'm excited too. All right, let's do this. Okay. So today I'm here to talk to you about how you can get the skinny on LNP size and total RNA concentration with Stunner. So one of the first things people notice about LNP samples is that they're really turbid, often so cloudy that you can't see through them. Uh, just like fog rolling in on the Golden Gate Bridge, you know that if only the cloudiness were less of a problem, uh, you could see some really spectacular things. So today we'll look at how you can cut through that cloudiness in your RNA LNPs to get some really spectacular data. So Unchained Labs has been helping out with our gene therapy squad for all kinds of problems and all kinds of gene therapy tech. Uh, we've been honing our tools to deliver answers and save boatloads of time for AAV and other viruses. But today we will highlight for the first time uh, the problems we can solve for RNA LNPs. So let's focus in on our RNA LNP team. First, Big Tuna, which can automate uh, time consuming buffer exchange, cleanup, and concentration steps. And we have big, our customers using Big Tuna for ethanol cleanup, uh, after form formation of LNPs, and LNP buffer exchange. So now it's time to introduce you to Stunner's new RNA LNP application. With the RNA LNP app, Stunner delivers low volume, high throughput DLS without the need for dilutions to get the size and uh, PDI data you need. On the same two microliter sample, Stunner quantifies total RNA concentration without the need for any reagents, standards, or fluorescent dyes, and quantifies turbidity. All this is done in a 96 well plate-based format that powers high throughput analysis of LNP samples fresh out of mixing. So how did Stunner do this? Simply add in two microliters of RNA LNP sample into the input well, and it's pulled into the microfluidic reservoir. At this step, the sample can sit for up to two hours before reading with no evaporation. So we see this on the image in front of us where the droplet is being added into the input well, and at the top of the screen, uh, we can see blue liquid hanging out into the in the microfluidic reservoir. After the plate is loaded into the instrument, the circuit is read first when empty. That removes any absorbance contributions from the plastic. Then a pump applies a small vacuum, which moves the sample into the microcuvettes to be read, uh, shown by the green circle in the image. Because the circuit has fixed path lengths, it can make very precise and accurate reads. Stunner contains two technologies to read each sample, UEVIS for concentration and DLS for sizing. And samples can be read for one to 96 samples at a time. So Stunner's RNA LNP application combines both technologies on a sample to deliver total RNA quantification and low volume, high throughput size and size distribution data. An LNP size is critical to the performance of a successful drug. I'll throw a stick in the literature and you'll hit a paper with LNP size data often showing the link between size and the effective dose needed. So when you've got lots of buffers and formulations and RNA constructs to test, you really do want to be gathering size data on everything. So Stunner's DLS gives you that high throughput power to gather size and size distribution on 96 samples in less than one hour. Here we're looking at intensity distribution data for a whole plate of LNPs with the average diameter noted as the uh, noted below uh, each distribution. So you no longer have to be limited by DLS data that has to be manually gathered for about a dozen pieces of data in a day max. Uh, now DLS can keep up with the LNP samples that you're generating as fast as you can make them. 
But also important is that while this whole plate is running less than an hour, the actual time to load a plate is no longer than time it takes to load a plate, a couple of minutes. Here we're looking at the results uh, from a typical LMP sample. On the left, you can see an intensity distribution. The mRNA LMPs tested here had an average hydrodynamic, radi hydrodynamic radius, diameter, excuse me, of 79 nanometers plus or minus 1%, which is visualized by the green bar plot uh, on your right and its error bar. Inside that bar plot, you can see the PDI value as a blue dot with error bars, showing a PDI of 0.14 plus or minus 0.02. That's the nice kind of statistics you can get once you can run lots of replicates on DLS using the stunner. So all this DLS data is just how you like it, delivering up quick intensity and mass distributions, uh, hydrodynamic diameter and PDI values. But now you can add the throughput that lets you get a really great understanding of the precision you have in your sample. So you don't need to stick to an end of one for your DLS data anymore. You can actually run triplicates, quadruplicates, octuplicates, uh, you name it. So time to switch gears to UV -vis. Here we're looking at a vial of RNA LMP COVID-19 vaccine and the green arrow points out the liquid in the vial. Anytime you try to see through solutions this cloudy, absorbance measurements done with plain vanilla instrumentation will have some issues to overcome. So if you load up an LMP sample into a stunner sample well, and you'll quickly see it being whipped into the serpentine reservoir and held there. Uh, this is shown on the left in this area of the chamber. To read the plate, stunner will pump the sample into that 0.1 and 0.7 millimeter path length microcuvettes for UV vis absorbance measurements. When reading LMPs, the combination of stunners two fixed path lengths microcuvettes provides precision, uh, precision and a broad dynamic range. Since LMPs are typically very turbid, cloudy samples, the short path lengths are needed so that light can actually pass through the samples and be read for absorbance measurements. So here's a quantitative look at all that turbidity. Uh, shown by comparing the signal from a PVS buffer against the signal from an empty LMP. That's the one not loaded with the nucleic acid. Uh, these LMPs create a whole lot of scatter signal that looks like absorbance, but usually just gets in the way of doing the analysis you want to do. If we, you know, are trying to deal with all that turbidity, uh, it can make quantifying this traditional UV vis almost impossible, uh, but total RNA quant by UV vis uh, is normally a big challenge on other instruments and not on stunner. So for example, if we squint at the full curve uh, shown on the right, we can see the RNA bump at about 260 nanometers, but the difference is pretty small when we're comparing the empty curve and the full curve. So to analyze this, we have to separate out the turbidity signal from the LNP absorbance due to RNA and other LNP components. So stunner's RNA LNP turbidity correction is a dramatic improvement on classic methods. Old school turbidity correction takes just the absorbance signal found at 340 nanometers, called the A340, and subtracts it from the RNA signal that you actually care about. Typically for DNA, that'll be at uh, 260 nanometers. By comparison, Stunner's RNA LMP turbidity correction matches the library of spectra across the full gathered spectrum to find the best fit. The end product is a picture of the turbidity over the complete 230 to 750 nanometers. Using the whole spectrum uh, opens the door to a more comprehensive turbidity correction and allows you to begin to see details uh, on the UV vis absorbing molecules present in your sample. So if you've got the whole RNA LMP spectrum, use it. And the result looks like this. So on the left, we have the raw data again. And on the right, Stunner has used our unmixed algorithms to isolate the impact of turbidity and remove it. This is shown by the black line indicating total signal and the gray line indicates the contribution from turbidity, which while the remainder is in green and blue. Uh, green is the isolated signal from RNA, and that will be used to calculate our total RNA concentration. Blue is the UV vis uh, absorbing signal from other components in the sample, uh, UV absorbing lipids, excipients, and buffer components. So Stenner completes its read and calculations to quantify total RNA concentration in less than a minute per sample, only on that two microliters sample, and does it without any dyes, reagents, or complicated workflow. Uh, here we're taking a look at Stunner's total RNA concentration and how it agrees closely with total mRNA concentration determined by a ribogreen assay. On the left, we can see the comparison between Stunner and that ribogreen measurement. 
and on the right, a two-fold dilution series of firefly, luciferlase, mRNA, LMPs showed highly linear results uh, down to 1.2 microgram per mil. Error bars shown in the graph are plus or minus one standard deviation. So having both the slope and the R squared close to one is exactly what you want in this experiment. And if you want to run a full plate of RNA LMPs to check RNA concentration, you'd see exactly what we've got here, where green is the signal due to RNA, gray shading is the turbidity, and the black line is the total absorbance once the turbidity has been removed. So for these samples, the average total RNA is 78.5 microgram per mil with a percent CV of 1.5. So Stunner gets you everything all at once, both the BLS and RNA concentration results on these 96 samples in about an hour, all from just that two microliters per well. And another tool Stunner has in its belt is turbidity quantification, where turbidity is normally a massive problem for a lot of UVBiz uh, instruments. Stunner is able to understand turbidity and analyze it to tell you a bit more information about what's going on with your particle. Here we're looking at turbidity signal from a 2x dilution series of empty LNPs, where the highest concentration is at the top of the graph with the highest signal. So you can see that as the sample gets diluted, uh, every step, the turbidity decreases. And it turns out that decrease is very linear. So what we are doing here is taking a sample of empty or full LMPs, where you saw the raw absorbent spectrum from L empty LMPs on the previous slide. And we, we've started with a known particle titer. Uh, empty LMPs are gray and full L LMPs are in green. So if we start with a known particle titer, we then dilute those samples across a 2x dilution series and check them out on Stunner. As part of that uv -biz analysis that Stunner is doing, it's quantifying turbidity, and it represents that as an absorbance value at 260, since that's the same value that we're most interested in for RNA quantification. We plot those turbidity values uh, at A260 of this dilution series against the expected particle uh, concentration after dilution, you get a very linear plot. So since turbidity scales with concentration, size, and payload, it's easy to use Stunner to quickly build a standard curve against particle count and use turbidity quantification to get an understanding of what particle count is from this UVBIS data. And Stunner software can also be powered up with 21 CFR Part 11 tools with full audit, audit trails and electronic signature capabilities to help you achieve data integrity on your experiment and reports. Uh, we also offer IQOQ services on Stunner as another option. Uh, the UV bit of Stunner is also shockingly accurate, and Stunner loves to prove it. So using the fundamentals tryptophan standards, the accuracy, precision, and linearity of the instrument can be proven at any time across the OD range of 200 to 225. So you can be confident about every sample with data that leaves no room for doubt. And features don't stop there, because if you'd like Stunner to, stop, to move uh, downstream, we also offer performance verification, where we have tests done with certified qubits that meet the, meet the United States Pharmacopeia and European Pharmacopeia guidelines for uv -biz spectrometers. The necessary calculations and reporting are handled automatically by the software. In addition to the capabilities we've discussed so far, Stunner also meets the needs of labs working in larger scales. Uh, so for these super high throughput needs, the plates used for Stunner are compatible with liquid handling robots, and the system can be fully integrated with our API setup so the robot does all the work for you, from loading the sample in the plate, setting up the experiment, loading the plate in the system, all the way to exporting the results into your limbs. On top of that, you can use plate tracking with barcodes to ensure traceability. So that's the whole picture of how Stunner delivers label-free, standard-free, and hassle-free gene therapy quant to the world of RNA LMPs. So with Stunner, you can cut through the fog to see all the spectacular details of your LMPs. So now I'm excited to ask, uh, what questions do you have for me? Thank you, Kevin, for taking us through how Stunner can help getting you, can help getting quick answers on size and total RNA concentration on LNPs with just a tiny amount of sample and without dyes or standards. Um, we have some great questions already uh, submitted. You can still ask a question by entering it in the Q&A section of your Zoom navigation bar. So are you ready to take it on? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, first question. Can you run one sample at a time and how long does that take? 
Yeah, absolutely. If you want to run one sample at a time, it's a quick pipetting, and then it takes about 45 seconds to about a minute for a, a DLS and UDVIS read. Exactly. Second question, can you run samples containing ethanol on this? Sure, yeah. Uh, according to our specifications, you can run uh, standard samples with up to 25% ethanol. Um, and then you just need to know that you have to adjust viscosity for your DLS results to make sure that you're getting appropriate size. Why is this better than using plate readers um, for RNA concentration? Mm, yep, good question, because you want to know if it's better than what's already in your lab. So in this case, Stunner offers two very big advantages uh, that are, uh, the first is uh, the very fixed path lengths that allow for extremely precise UV-Vis reads, uh, which is something that you're not going to get if you don't know where the, the total path length of your, uh, of your sample is in a traditional UV-Vis reader. And the second is that advanced turbidity correction uh, that allows you to, you know, with the short path length, first see through the sample, and second, eliminate that turbidity contribution to quantify your total RNA. Can you use this instrument for other UVVIS applications? Yes, absolutely. So uh, Stunner, that precise UVVIS applies for a lot of samples. You can use this for uh, protein quantification with extremely high accuracy and precision. You can use this for RNA quantification too. So if you wanna check the concentration of your starting materials, it's very easy to run those on Stunner and use one of our quantification apps to understand exactly what concentration you have by UVVIS. And that's with expected uh, accuracy within 2% of the true value and expected precision within 1% of the true value. What is the minimal sample concentration? Hmm. So on the lower limit of uh, RNA concentration, uh, we'll get, we can get down to about five microgram per mil and still be able to resolve that from the turbidity signal. Uh, and then, yeah, on the DLS side of things, we're pretty successful with about a one-tenth dilution from a typical stock concentration. Okay, a bit more technical questions. What is the light scattering angle used by the instrument? Ah, so actually, light scattering angle, no, so I'm gonna put this one to you because I know you haven't memorized. Yeah. It's 142 degrees. 142 degrees, so that's, that's, a, that's for the DLS measurement. Um, yes. And the UV vis measurement is the first transmission through the plate. Yes, exactly. Um, can the standard read samples that contain Triton X100? If so, what are the range limits? Um, I would say yes, but there is a limit there on the concentration. Um, but that number I don't know by heart. We can get back to you on that. Yeah, that's something we can follow up with. We definitely have a, a specification table for uh, surfactants and other types of molecules and what the upper limits are. Yes, indeed. Could it quantify protein concentration when there is low molecular weight alcohol, five to 10% present in the sample? Uh, uh, yeah, I believe that should be no problem. Um, so protein quantification is just done off of UV viz. Um, and that's something that we actually highlight a lot of excellent data uh, in our brochure and in a few of our app, app notes looking at uh, spot on accuracy uh, is the name of the one to look up and yeah, be prepared to be impressed with that kind of quantification. Okay, uh, one final one. Is the background correction interactive for 260 nanometer measurement? Background correction interactive. Uh, that's an interesting question. I'm not sure how to answer that. Nels, what are your thoughts? I, I think it's a bit unclear in exactly what they mean, but um, we, we measure the background and turbidity over the full spectrum, and so not specific for the 260 nanometer measurement, um, if that is what this person meant. Otherwise, we'll need to get back to you on that. And I think that is our cue as the last question that we can handle. Um, thank you for answering all of these great questions and thank you for your great presentation. I also want to thank all of you who joined us live today. If we'd like to have a deeper conversation with our team, please do get in touch with us at info at enchainlabs.com or visit our website at www.unchainlabs.com. We would love to connect with you. Thank you again for attending our virtual seminar, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.